Let's take a look at transformations of functions. And um, get that a little bit better there. There we go. Trying something new with a little webcam. Uh, never have thought of it much before, but then I had somebody that uh, I think is a pretty fair expert on um, adult learning. Uh, they said they, that uh, students uh, respond better if they can see who's talking. Um, so, uh, not so you can pretty, see my pretty face. Far from it. <laughs> Don't have one. Okay. Um, now let's take a look at our basic graphs first. Our first one is y is equal to x. And it looks like that right there. Our next one is y is equal to x squared, which looks like that. Our third one is y is equal to x to the third, which looks like that. And then we have y is equal to square root of x. which looks like that and y is equal to the absolute value of x that is our v-shaped graph now these are the standard five you see in any any college algebra book um, and then it seems like they they choose a sixth one to throw in and one we're currently using uh, throws the cube root in which I like better than uh, the step function which some people use and that would look like that graph wise Well, we're going to take a look at uh, shifts, and we'll we'll do it by example, and see how they affect your basic graph. Now, those are the basic graphs you should know uh, if you're going on to um, into calculus of some sort. These these you should know, um, and then using your basic shifts, you can graph quite a few of them without picking up your graphing calculator. The whole purpose of this section is so you don't have to pick up your graphing calculator. Let's take a look at our first one. We got f of x is equal to x squared plus 3. Now if you have numbers at the very end or at the very beginning, these are going to shift up or down. Uh, this is going to shift up 3. Now um, my basic graph looks exactly the same. It's still the U-shaped looking graph, the parabola. I'm just going to shift the entire thing up 3 places. So that would be our uh, our graph goes along with that. Now, if on the other hand you have a negative number like this, so we've got f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus two. Again, if it's at the very end or very beginning, uh, it's up or down. Well, this is going to be down two, so that's going to shift down two places. It's still going to look like our V-shaped graph. Just the entire thing is shifted down two units. Now these are vertical shifts. Some books call them trans transformations. Um, translations even, I think I've seen. Now these next ones demonstrate what happens when you got a number inside of your X. So we've got f of x is equal to x plus 1 squared. Now if your number's inside with your x, it's going to shift left or right opposite of what you think. Like here, we have a plus 1. That'd make me think it goes right 1, so it's really going to go left 1. Now it's still the u-shape u uh, graph, the parabola, just the entire thing is shifted left 1 unit. And that would be our graph. Let's look at this one. We've got f of x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. Here are the numbers inside with the x, so again it's going to shift left or right, opposite of what you think. The negative 5 would make you think it goes left 5, because that's where the negatives are. So this is really going to go right 5. Again, it still looks like our v-shape graph. 
just the entire thing is shifted right five places. So that would be our answer. And uh, I guess it's time to... I think I'm still uh, ahead of the game here. Um, let's see if that's a lie. I think all of these have PDF uh, pages, to be honest. Yeah, it does. So we're fine. Let's see what happens if you got a negative in front of your problem. Okay, so we've got f of x is equal to negative x squared. If you got a negative out in front of your problem, in front of your function, uh, what this is going to do is this is going to reflect it. So this reflects across the x-axis. Now here, remember, here is my x squared. So it looks like that. So we put a negative before it, it's going to flip it across the x-axis. So it's going to look like that right there. Now let's see what happens if you have a negative inside with your x. So we got f of x is equal to square root of negative x. Now instead of the negative being clear out in front, the negative is inside with the x. Well, this is going to reflect it. This reflects across the y-axis. Now remember what the square root of x looks like. That looks like uh, this right here. So our answer here reflects across the y-axis. It'll be flipped over like this. So that would be, um, that would be our graph. Now there's one um, little tricky one to it. I wouldn't even uh, assign it in College Algebra, except for you see quite a few of these in Trig. Um, we've got square root. The negative is inside with the x, but we also have a number in there. Now before you can say anything about your shifts, shifting left or right, you first have to factor that negative out. So I factor a negative out, and that becomes uh, x minus 4 then. Well, this uh, negative inside here is still reflects across the y-axis. Now this negative 4 here, again, if it's inside with the x, it's going to shift it left or right, opposite of what you think. The negative 4 would make you think it goes left 4, so it's really going to go right 4. Okay, so here's our y is equal square root of x. Looks like that. Okay, the negative that's inside, like that, is going to flip it across the, the y-axis, so it'll look like that. Then, the negative inside with the number is now going to move that right four places. So I'm taking this graph and I'm moving right four places and it looks like that. Now when you're applying transformations and you're doing your graphs, um, you always want to do your reflections first and then do your um, up, down, left, right uh, transformations. But that last one would be our graph. If it was asking for the graph. Now this, this is one I, I oftentimes will put on a test. I'll put something of this form. And the specific instructions I'll have on it is to describe the transformation. Now, I, I'll tell them they can give you the graph that they want, but that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for them to describe uh, what's happening, what's happening with the transformations. Um, you know, as easy as a graphing calculator is, anybody can plug that in and get the graph. That's, that's not the exciting part. The exciting part is to be able to graph this without the graphing calculator by understanding what these transformations, uh, what's happening with them. Well... Here at the end we have a negative one. That's going to go down one. Remember, if the number's at the very end, it's left or it's uh, up or down. Now here we got a number inside with the x, and it's going to be opposite of what you think. Plus two makes us think it goes right two, so it's really going to go left two. And then a negative out in front is going to reflect across the x-axis. Not that I can actually write, but. Uh, across the x-axis. 
Okay, let me just, um, uh, even though uh, this is all I want on test, so if this is on a test, uh, you can just stop at the words. That's, that's what I'm going to grade. Okay, flips it upside down. Cross the x-axis. It would look like that. Then I move it left two and down one. So this entire thing shift left uh, two, down one. And my answer would look like that right there. Again, the beauty of the transformations is I can uh, very quickly sketch this. I do not have to pick my calculator up. I do not have to plug it in. I can very quickly get that. And if you're going on calculus, that saves you so much time to be able to do that. Okay, where is this used at besides those going on to calculus? Business uses this a lot. Let's say I got this um, cost function right here. Maybe this is cost function uh, for Cali. It isn't. It's a lot more than this, but we'll pretend this is. Okay, now I, uh, I always give this example in class. Um, you got students sitting in the classroom. Um, well, each one of them sitting in the classroom is costing the college money. Um, you might be sitting, well, how's, how do you get that? I mean, that's how we make money. Well, if uh, there's a big air conditioner above the classroom, air conditioner caves in, um, kills all the students in the class. Horrible accident. Well, um, maybe it's faulty. You know, the, the roof was uh, kind of weak and so forth. Um, well, what's, what's going to happen? The families of those students are going to sue the college, right? You know, you got 20 students uh, that died in this horrible accident. Um, they're, each of the families probably at least going to get a million dollars. That's 20 million dollars. Well, the college doesn't have money sitting around uh, to pay for that. Uh, so instead of them going bankrupt, uh, they buy insurance on students. Um, now, I don't know how much it costs uh, per student uh, per month, but let's pretend it's $10. So if I have uh, 10 students, or 20 students, uh, take 10 times 20, and this is going to be our variable cost. How much changes based upon how many students? Now we have a fixed cost that goes along with it. All the salaries of everybody, um, the salary of the president, the vice president, deans, associate deans, the directors, uh, maintenance, um, everybody um, is figured in here. So that's our, that's our fixed cost. No matter what, uh, this is what they have to pay if they're going to have those people employed. Um, so depend upon how many, no matter how many students come in, this is what's going to least cost. Well, I go to graph this, plug in my graph and calculator and I don't see anything. I see a blank screen. Well, for business, this is not unheard of to have a huge uh, fixed cost like this. If I really want to see what the graph looks like, I don't know much about this graph, but I know it's shifted up 500,000 units. So if I go to try to zoom, uh, I zoom one time, zoom twice, zoom three times, I'm probably still not going to find it. Um, you have to understand uh, what these numbers do, at least in business, if you want to get the, the picture of it. Um, then you can set your window settings to the appropriate numbers and you can actually see, see your graph. These last two I don't like, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about them. Okay. We got f of x is equal to 2x squared. And we got um, f of x is equal to one half x squared. Now remember what our y is equal to x squared looks like. You know it's a parabola, looks like that. Okay. Now what these do is these shrink or stretch your graph. So here we got our, our parabola, y is equal to x squared. And uh, if we put a number in front of it, like a two or one half, uh, one of them will bring it in like that, and one of them will, will go out like that. Now, they're opposite of what you think. The 2 before it makes me think, well, it should be twice as big then. It should open up. But it doesn't. It actually op um, closes in. So y is equal to 2x squared. Might look like this right here. So it takes my, it takes my basic graph in and shrinks it in. Now, 1 half x squared. Um, again, that makes it's opposite of what you think. 1 half x squared makes you think, well, it should be half as big but actually spreads it out like that. Well, why don't I like these? Well, what did I just graph here? Did I graph one half x squared or did I graph one third x squared or one fifth x squared? Have no clue. Um, this two x squared here, did I graph two x squared or four x squared or eight x squared? No clue. Uh, the only way to get a fairly accurate picture of these 
um, is to plot points or to plug in your calculator. Well, if you're going to do either one of them, it defeats the purpose of the transformations. Transformations so you can very quickly come up with a graph. Uh, so I usually never sign these myself. Uh, it's important to understand what those numbers do, but it's hard to get the graph from them unless you're plotting points or something. Now these up here, you know, I'm fairly fairly certain if you graph this on a graphing calculator, I wouldn't be very far off. And that's the beauty of transformations. And uh, that's actually, I think, uh, the last slide. Yeah, it is. So I'll go ahead and uh, end the recording here.